We're live. Hello. How's it going, guys? We got murder she ate. A Wednesday tradition. Here's. Do you want a four? No. Oh. Okay. So what's new, guys? Got some cases. The one I'm doing today was recommended by. Long time viewer Ketonement. Also, can you hear us? Because last time the audio was muted for like two minutes, maybe a minute and a half. And I'm hoping the like lag issues and stuff is fixed, but I don't know. I have all my windows closed basically. Wait, what happened? Okay. And for those of you that are new to this, this is nothing really about keto except that we eat keto foods for dinner. And maybe we'll answer a few keto questions, but it's mostly just about nonsense. We talk about crime, mysteries. Last time I did a heist story. And it's just kind of more like a hangout. Maybe you eat dinner, maybe get some dinner inspiration. Yeah. And we tell stories. You know, they're real stories. Yeah, they're not like movies or anything. People have asked if they're movies. First time in here, well, welcome. We're gonna answer some keto questions, but again, mostly crime. Hope you like crime. What are you guys having for dinner? Working perfectly this time, that's good to know. So we got dinner here, I was in a little bit of a rush. I made these shrimp skewers, because Mega wasn't that hungry today. I'm not really that hungry at all, but I guess it's, she ate, so yeah. I'll have a skewer. And then I have this steak. It looks pretty rare, but I actually did it on the smoker. That's so why it looks red. It looks weird, but it should be good. I've never done it like that before. So yeah, I have a shrimp skewer and then I have some pesto on the side. I'm gonna dip it in some fat, some and deliciousness. I got a chocolate for after dinner and maybe I'll snack on some other stuff too. Who knows? Someone's I having a broccoli salad, chicken wrap. Someone's prepping dinner, salad and sardines. That sounds great to Matt, not to me. Keto sesame broccoli chicken, that sounds delicious. I want that. Can't wait for your reveal. I also have some ghee here because my dinner does not have much fat in it. Mississippi pot roast with butter and avocado and fat bomb. Yeah. What exactly is Mississippi pot roast? It's like, what's different about that? I think it's, they put like, um, they put is something it pepperonis and like ranch. Seasoning, I hey, don't know. Do you guys ever smoke ribs? Yeah, we do. I've been wanting to do that again, actually. It's really good. Ribeye Caesar salad, that sounds like the perfect dinner. Curry butter chicken, that's also perfect. Yeah, for Murder She Ate, I really feel like I need to cook something fancy, like the shrimp skewers, to impress you guys. Meatloaf balls, that sounds really good. I made keto buns hamburgers for dinner. Mm. These shrimps are so tiny. What snacks to bring to a parenting class? What is a parenting class? You learn how to be a parent? Yeah, so what it is. Um, like nuts. I like these epic bars is what I've been having a lot for snacks. Jerky? Yeah. $5 from Sophia Daily. You guys have no idea how many lies. I think you mean lives. You changed. Thank you. Thank you. That's we so appreciate sweet. it. <laughs> um, hi, guys. Congrats on the baby. So exciting. Side question. What raw diet do you feed your fur babies? It's only been like three days. We're not experts. It's been like five days. Five days. Um, we've been using the Blue Ridge Beef. Um, but we got an article from someone who said it's been, it was recalled back in 2016. I did some digging and it seems like maybe they're not the most trustworthy company. So we're going to actually go to another local pet store that has a different brand or we're going to check that brand out. So you might switch. Yeah. But they are loving it. Both of them. I have a few cookbooks of yours. I love them. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Out of those ebook ones, if you have any of those, which one do you like the best? I guess I should just take them all off the skewer. Yeah, you should. Let's do that. De-skewer. You know what I miss doing? My family used to always do uh, shish kebabs. We should do those. Yeah, why don't we do them? I don't know. I didn't know we had these skewers. Ugh, this is hard. I didn't know you liked things like shish kebabs. 
They do. How do you? You just gotta push. This is tough for me. There this we one's go. really stuck on here. What? Look how stuck that one is. Takes two. Just got your cookbook for Valentine's Day. Your home is beautiful. I think that in every video. Thank you. We really appreciate that. We picked this um, not after much house searching. No. It was like the second time we went out. We we're just like, yep, look we good to us. We're honestly, ready. I don't think we put enough thought into it. Yeah, but. The one thing is I didn't realize what a actual hazard our backyard is where like our trees could just fall on people's houses and then I don't know what happens. I assume you have to pay money for that. <laughs> like, yeah, it's kind of, I'm worried about it a little. We just have to get all the trees checked out. I'm trying to listen while trail running. Ooh, that sounds exciting. Yeah, our table is a little too high. I mean, it's not a table, it's an island. Yeah. It's supposed to be high. Mm. How are they reading comments? Because they are paying attention to their food, someone said. You can do both, kind of. Yeah, you can. Do, there's two people, one focuses on food, one reads the comments. Daddy Warbucks, thank you. Dang, you're this guy always, really is Daddy Warbucks. You're always here, I love it. <laughs> Another 10 spot, because you deserve it. We appreciate it. You deserve it. Um, what kind of sauce are you eating? I'm just using pesto. It's store-bought pesto. Um, and it has ex it uses extra virgin olive oil as the base. So if you're buying pesto, I, that's what I would make sure I look for. I don't really do too much sauce, honestly. I do mostly just like ghee like that. Um... All right, what time is it? Should we get started? It's 5.34. Yeah, you can start. Any info on Butter Bob? What's that? Doesn't he have a YouTube channel? I don't know too much about it. People have said he Check does him. YouTube. Hmm. What is ghee? It's just clarified butter, so it's... um. Yeah. It's dairy-free, right? Yeah. Butter has like some milk salads in it, I believe. So then those get cooked off and then you have ghee. I made your it's Southern baked butter. chicken. It was bomb. That so is a really good recipe from Keto Made Easy. Cycle Walt, $2 donation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is there any like ongoing cases we could dig into too? Do you guys know of any? Like what's big on Nancy Grace these days? You ready? Yeah. So I'm doing the murder of Faith Hedgepeth. And again, just a heads up, we try to post both of the cases we're doing ahead of time, at least a couple hours. So if you do want to look into them and have some background, maybe give out your, what you think like um, are good. What, what like, what is the, what word I'm looking for? What? Like when you give out your scenario of like what happened. Theories? Your theory. That could also be really fun, but you can also just listen and think of a theory. Okay. Two dollar donation from Kaylee Jepson. Are you related to Carly Ray? Case suggestions: the Jessica Chambers case. Ooh, you know I've that heard one? of Jessica Chambers actually. I think I've heard of it too, but I can't remember. Yeah, I'll have to look into that. Thank you. Okay. So the murder of Phage. Faith Hedgepath. I'm, I'm just going to use Faith. So Faith was found murdered at the age of 19 on September 7th, 2012 in her apartment in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. So at the time she was a junior at the University of North Carolina and she lived in an off-campus apartment with her roommate Karina Rosario and I'm going to refer to her just moving forward as Rosario. Okay. So, dead in her apartment. Dead in her apartment, yes. Okay. Who found her? Did we get to that? Um, no, I didn't get to okay. that. Uh, so for a short time, uh, the, Rosaria had a boyfriend named Eric, and he lived with them. But he became really abusive towards Rosario, so they actually ended up breaking up, and he moved out. Okay. Totally normal. Not normal, but yeah. So Eric continued to harass them by threatening them, breaking them into the apartment, which led Faith 
to push Rosario into getting a protective order from the court. And she actually was like the one who drove Rosario to the court and helped her get this protective order against the ex-boyfriend, Eric. So we have a prime suspect. Yes. Right? Yeah. The day before she was killed, <clears throat> she had a full day of classes and then she went to rush for a sorority she was hoping to join. The, so the sorority was historically Native American <laughs> And that was her background. She's Native American. Yeah, so it was very close for her, and you know, it was it was something she wanted to deeply be a part of. So she left the rush at about seven fifteen p.m. and she went to the library with her roommate Rosario. Faith actually left earlier than Rosario, but she eventually went back to the library mm -hmm. to pick her up. So Faith mm -hmm. is Rosario's prime ride throughout. Like I feel like their friendship, or, or Rosario always was hitching rides from people. I don't think Uber was around in 2012, and uh, she this didn't is have college, a car. right? Yeah. I know when I was in college, we had like one kid that drove us most places. Yeah. That's probably her scenario. I would hate to be that kid. Eh. I so, mean, we paid him for gas and stuff. Yeah. Okay. So after she picked up Rosario from the library, they went back to their apartment, and it was around 12:30 a.m. that they decided to go out for the night. So they went out to a nightclub. And it was a nightclub that let people under 21 enter to just dance and, you know, hang out. And that's like a popular thing, but I never understood it. Like it's, you know, I don't like that. Yeah. The under one, 21 clubs suck. Yeah. They're like if you're like 27 and you're going to an under 21 club, like, I don't know. That's not cool. Right. I think there was one in my university. People would just get really drunk and then go there. Oh, okay. But they're pretty dumb. Yeah. Um, so... They were at the club, and they spent a significant amount of time there. The club security cameras... Wait, are we assuming they were drinking beforehand or no? No. Okay. The club security cameras caught them at about 2.06 a.m., so an hour and a half afterwards, leaving. And Rosario had later told the police that they left because she had an upset stomach. Eh, that's possible, right? Mm -hmm. I've left places out of an upset stomach. <laughs> And then at 3.40 a.m., Faith was exchanging texts with a guy named Brandon Edwards, and it's yet to be known whether he was like an ex or just an acquaintance or like a friend. Um, and the text convo... One sec, though. Upset stomach, to me, that means maybe they were drinking. Because yeah. like sometimes if you're throwing up and you're super drunk, you're just like, I got an upset stomach. Yeah, that's possible. We, we just don't know. Like, and their alcohol, blood alcohol content level wasn't checked, I believe. Um, so the text conversation, Faith first texts Brandon, Hey B, can you come over here, please? Karina, that's the roommate Rosario, yeah. needs you more. Aha, uh -huh. you know, please let her know that you care. Mm -hmm. Three minutes later, Faith sends another text with just the word then. And it has been suggested, which makes a lot of sense, that it was just auto correction of the text. So it would read, Karina needs you more than you know. As opposed oh. to, Karina needs you more, aha, uh -huh, you know. Yeah. And that's happened to like me before. That's definitely know, what that was. I don't know why that's like a common exchange or autocorrect for Apple or phones or anything. Um, and then B, B, Brandon, replied 36 minutes later asking who the text was from. That was it. Okay. So, did they know? They were probably not like ex-boyfriend and girlfriend unless he like got a new number or something all of a sudden. Um... This is Faith texting the boy, right? Yeah, the one Faith. Okay. Um, so the neighbor downstairs, this, and this is the neighbor's recollection, the neighbor downstairs heard three loud bangs, like a heavy bag being dropped or furniture being overturned. And that's just like an account that I wanted to share. Um, but at the same time, Faith was texting Brandon. Rosario was also trying to contact Brandon but with no response from him, she called another mutual friend, Jordan. And at 4.25 a.m., so this is getting late into the night, Jordan went to their apartment to pick up Rosario, and she leaves the apartment, assuming Faith is sleeping, with the door unlocked. Which to me is weird. It's your apartment. Where are we now? Like what? It's North Carolina? Yeah, she's in her apartment. They're at their apartment off campus. Okay. I mean... But like they've had issues with Eric... The ex-boyfriend mm, okay, breaking yeah. in. I mean, and it's 425 in the morning. If you think your roommate's sleeping, like, I lock the door, right? I don't mm. keep it unlocked. Like, that doesn't make sense to me. Maybe they're in, like, a safe building, but it's just, it's weird to me. Let me just get the whole flow of things right here. Yeah. So, Rosario and the roommate, the Faith Hedgepath. 
Yeah. That's who the story is about. They go home. Yeah. A boy that Rosario likes, Faith is texting. Mm -hmm. It's what it seems, yeah. And then a second boy ends up getting Rosario to leave with him. She picks him up. He picks her up, yeah. And who is this second boy? What's his... He was just a friend of Rosario's. He played soccer at Chapel Hill. So 425, we're assuming sex. Some kind of sexual thing going on, right? We're, yeah, maybe Rosario is wanting to continue to party, so she just she's trying to get out of there. She's calling. Yeah. Do you want to get that? Okay. Oh, $5 donation from Nisi. Please keep the series Murder, She Ate has become one of my favorite shows. Hashtag SSDGM. That's I don't saying. know what that means. Uh, I don't know what the hashtag is. I really want to figure it out though, and that's like a puzzle now. Please let us know. But thank you. That means so much. Julius, chill. And Julius always. Is I'm sorry. Julius. He always gets your guys' dogs barking at home, I know. I know. Oh, there he goes. Continue. Okay. So Jordan picked up Rosario at 425. And he drives uh, Rosario to an acquaintance's house nearby, like five minutes. And they stayed there until 11 a.m. the following morning. So at 3.30, uh, no, I don't know. So at 10.30 a.m., Rosario, and these are like timestamps from her phone, she first calls Faith for a ride. But Faith doesn't answer the call. So she calls another friend, Marisol, who picks her up and takes her back to her apartment. Okay. Stay sexy, don't get murdered for my favorite murder podcast. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> That's cute. Thank you. Okay. Um, so Marisol and Faith, uh, Marisol and Rosario get back to the apartment and Rosario's calling for Faith, like seeing if she's home, but there's no answer from her. So they go into her room to check if she's there and they find her on the floor, leaning against her bed with her shirt pulled over her face. And she was covered with a blanket also and had no clothes on from the waist down. Okay. There was also, and she's dead, I assume. Murdered. Yeah. yeah. There was also a big pool of blood by her body and a splatter on the wall and the closet door. So Rosario panics, calls 911, and the operator on the other end stays on the line, says to stay, for Rosario to stay on the line because she doesn't want her to be alone. So Rosario says okay. And maybe she's panicked, but like she wasn't alone. She was with Marisol. So, I don't know, I guess I would have stayed on the line, but I would have also been like, I'm not alone, I'm with my friend Marisol, but I'm going to stay on the line. Yeah, you got to stay on the line. But all she I said, mean, yeah, you stay on the line, but wouldn't you say, tell the operator, like, I'm not alone, I'm with someone else? Yeah, but maybe you're just really flustered, like, who knows? But, but yeah. But all she said the, was, okay. The idea is that there could be someone still in the house, right? So if you're alone. Yeah, she didn't want her to be alone. Okay. So that's really all that there is. I mean, prime suspect has to be the ex-boyfriend, right? Eric, yeah. That, that was my Like, it's totally point. his style just to be, like, stalking her at 4.30 a.m., I would imagine. And then you see roommates leave. Or stalking just the apartment itself. Yeah. We, yeah. So the investigation. The details of the inve investigation are actually never disclosed publicly um, at first, which is weird. And the town up, um, wait. Oh, and the town of Chapel Hill, so Chapel Hill and the college itself, they obtained a court order sealing on all the records that were collected. So they didn't want any of the information about uh, faith being provided to the public, which to me, I don't know. Two years is a very long time because like, don't, well, the, don't you think like there's probably people who might be not only suspects, but like they have seen what has happened or like they saw her at the club more than the security camera. I think it's a balancing act of like, you want to hold some info. So then if you get a suspect, you can ask them <laughs> or someone confesses or something. You have to have info. For two that years? The, yeah. You have to have info that the public doesn't know. Maybe like six months to a year no no every case has certain info that the public doesn't know about but nothing we didn't know nothing. anything about her probably... body about just about anything like about her yeah. whereabouts they should probably release some stuff i would imagine right? yeah like her parents didn't know anything about her and what had the autopsy they had no clue about the autopsy yeah i think you get to know about that no they didn't oh, okay. everything was sealed according to court order i'm not sure what the reasoning was that they gave the court to like say okay to this but it was so, two years later, 
the information is finally released, the details, and the autopsy revealed that Faith suffered extensive skull fractures, cuts all over her face, and her arms and legs had severely been beaten. That's pretty intense. So was there a knife? Was she like attacked with a knife? No, some say, some kind of like Wikipedia said it was a rum bottle, but like, I feel like in, in looking at this case, there wasn't much exposure of this case. Like, I don't think anyone here might have heard of it. And the, the police were obviously, and like the town was trying to keep it under wraps. It was just, it's very weird that there was no like exposure to something like this. Because it's on a school campus. You would think like, yeah. if there's a murderer out there or a rapist or whatever. I'm sure everyone on the campus knows about it. And they're like talking details of it. Yeah. Um, so police also found semen of her, semen inside of her, but couldn't determine if she was sexually assaulted. But I'm going to go with she was. Why? I don't know. It just, it's her, her clothes from her waist down were off. Yeah. Her face was covered. I feel like that's just like but a... Can, can it be from like sex within 24 hours prior yeah, to the... Yeah, it could have been. Throughout that day. She's a college girl. She was busy. She had on. classes all day. She went to Rush. Then she went to library. Yeah. So we know like what she did that day. And she was very busy. Someone said, you know when you've been watching too much Keto Connect when you find yourself saying both with an L. Oh both. Um, and also there was DNA that matched... Um, the DNA of the semen throughout the room, like in other places. Okay. So I don't know what to me that says at this point. Not too much. Oh, I guess to me that says no, because she could have just had sex in her room with that same person, right? I guess. Um, so there are a couple pieces of evidence that like are interesting to note, like really think about. The first one is Faith, oh no, a voicemail that Faith left. Um, on the night of her death to a friend, but it sounds like a butt dial and you can actually go and listen to it. I listened to the entire thing, but it sounds like it was from the club since like in the middle of like all this ruckus, mm -hmm. you like hear rapping and it's found out to be that the song that was playing was Booty Work by T-Pain. Um, and the also, also the timestamp of when the call was made was 1 23 a.m. Okay. So according to the timeline, she is at the nightclub. So the I don't put much weight in that. It sounds like it is about that. You can't make out any dialogue. No, there's a there is a lot on like Reddit, on like other you, places. Because oh. if you're actually talking into the phone and you're in a club, you can hear pretty easily that it's like a person talking into a phone. It doesn't sound like a butt dial. Yeah, no, it's definitely a butt dial, but you can kind of tell. Like names of people. Yeah, so it sounded like a fight between Faith, another female, and then there was also two males. It sounded like a fight. Yeah. Okay. And one was potentially the bouncer, like, you need to get out of here or whatever. So drunk. For sure drunk, I would imagine. Yeah, and like, the one female seemed like jealous. And so this is just one guy who like encrypted, not encrypted it, but like, he listened to it and he could hear it and he like typed everything out. And so, like, that's the account. This wasn't, like, dug deep into, like, maybe True Crime Garage does, you know? Like, that would be good if they did this. Um, so It sounds like it could be a lead, though. There's some kind of fighting. Maybe yeah. you're super drunk getting kicked out of the nightclub. And you can apparently hear the names Eric and Rosie in the audio. So when I listen to it, and the only ways you can listen to it is by seeing the, um, the subtitles. So, like, even if you don't hear it, like, you read it. So it kind of, like, biases you. Yeah. Um, but if they did get kicked out of the nightclub, I feel like there'd be memory and a record of that. Or maybe, right? I mean, so... The bouncer would remember. So the one thing about the audio is that in the beginning, like the first... So it's, a, it's a pretty long butt dial, but in the beginning, there's no music at all. And then in the middle of the call, the music comes in. So it's as if maybe they were outside where mm -hmm. the bouncer is, and then she went inside to try and get away. Mm -hmm. Because you see her, say, you hear her saying, like, get off of me, ow. And this other girl is, like, verbally abusing her and maybe, like, hitting her because she's saying ow. Mm. But, like, also, I, I was reading all the dialogue that was written <laughs> for the audio. Okay, but she's definitely, mm. So, one sec. So she's for sure alive at three whatever texting someone. Or it's, it's, it's at least her phone, right? Yeah. Texting Brandon? Yeah. 
So she doesn't necessarily have to be alive at like 3.45 a.m. texting. That but, could be Rosario. Yeah, it could be. But and it's a She could be dead in her room at she, that point. Yeah. Rosario could have done this. I'm leaning maybe Rosario is a suspect now. She is a suspect for sure. And we got a $1 donation from Tylen Yardas. Thank you. I'm actually going to say, so Eric is the abusive. No, Eric's not the abusive. He is. Eric's the abusive ex-boyfriend. Rosario is the roommate. Yes. I'd say those are definitely top two. And at this point, I might even say Rosario is my top. Just based on the vibe I'm kind of getting from her is like, I don't know, jealousy, fighting, maybe like... You're I mean, getting the, that vibe? Yeah, oh, yeah. Assuming that Eric and Rosie were actually the names spoken in the audio. Not just that, even the text sent from uh, the, the main, the girl who Faith. died, Faith's phone. They were like asking, basically trying to get Rosario to hook up with some guy, right? Yeah, well it said like, Rosario needs you, show her you care. I feel like Rosario text, sent that text. That's my just gut feeling. Maybe. Okay. So the second piece of evidence was that there was a note found near her body. You can also look this note up. And it says like in chicken scratch, not chicken scratch. Just There's a note next to her body? Yeah. It's, you can read it. Um, but it says, I'm not stupid, je bitch, and then jealous. And that's a note next to her body. So... I mean, are we sure this is associated with the murder or this could just be no, randomly there? No, it's not. It could just be something also to like throw them off the case, right? To me, yeah. Because the police did put a lot of effort into this note, assuming it was a part of the case. Okay. Um, I would assume the same. Yeah. And that strikes me as something more Rosario-like. Or just like another female for sure. Yeah, sounds like female. Because like, why would she say jealous? Why would she, yeah. Um... There was no blood on the note either, just to note. And then it could it was thought that it was used to distract the police more than actually the person who killed Faith wrote it and left it there. Because like okay. if you, you, I don't know, it just doesn't make sense that you would leave that note after you kill someone, right? It doesn't make a ton of sense, yeah. Um, Tylen Yard has donated two dollars again. Crimes on campus lower college ratings. That's why. Mm -hmm. oh. So there's that some incentive. That's a good school, isn't it? North Carolina? Yeah. I think it's decent. It's a good law school. Is it? Yeah. Okay. So 2020 did a DNA profile a year later, and or maybe it was the two years later, and they released a generated image of the male. Um, pretty generic, except, you know, he was like dark-skinned and... Can DNA profiles tell you what they look like, though? I don't know. I can tell you like probably their skin color. So he was either very strongly Native American and European mixed or Latino. Okay. I don't really know how they determined that, but they were 80% confident that he had olive skin, dark hair, and very few freckles. I also don't know how they determined that, but there's a sketch you can also see online of the person they thought it was. But it's not even a sketch based on like eyewitness testimony. It's no, a sketch but it was a legit like, person. It was like they drew your face. That's weird. That is kind of weird. So Chapel Hill named no suspects after interviewing 2,000 people and doing 750 DNA tests. They thought it was someone who knew her well, and they had actually narrowed it down to 10 people. And supposedly they do know who it is, but they don't have enough evidence to pin it on I that person. That. I mean, I don't know why. I mean, why don't you believe that, I guess? That whole paragraph you read is just weird to me, like, they narrowed it down to 10 people that supposedly know who it is. Yeah. Like, knowing who it is and not having enough evidence to pin on them, that's just the ultimate, like, out for the cops to where it's like, oh, we can't really do much now. No, I don't think that's the ultimate out. I think it is. Isn't most crimes, like 90% of crimes, made by someone you, you know, know or closest to you? Yeah. So, like, if they know who was closest to her, like, if they know it was Rosario, but Rosario has an alibi for everything because she left that morning. So, I guess, how do you know it's someone if you don't have enough evidence to pin it on them? Isn't that kind of the definition of knowing because someone did it? There's only a couple possible suspects. See, to me, that sentence means, like, man, the cops really think it's this guy, but they don't have enough evidence to pin it on him. Yeah. Which, it could not be that guy. Since you don't have enough evidence to pin it on them, who knows? 
I don't know. I, w- I guess I, we would need to know more. Like, how did they fit? How did they narrow it down to ten people from two thousand interviews? You know, I don't know. So the suspects, Eric, as you mentioned, Rosario's ex-boyfriend. So f- being that Faith is the one that persuaded Rosario to get the protect- protective order. Oh wait, 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 Eric is Rosario's ex-boyfriend. Yeah. I thought it was Faith's ex-boyfriend. No, it's okay. Rosario's ex-boyfriend. And Rosario left with Eric that night? No, she left with Jordan. A different guy, okay. She didn't go with her abusive boyfriend. Okay. She has a protective order against him. So, But Eric the, hated Faith, be, probably okay. based on the fact that yeah. Faith pushed his girlfriend to get a protective order, his ex-girlfriend. Um, and then the day before Faith was murdered, Eric posted on Twitter and texted to a friend asking them to forgive him for what he was about to do. I don't know. Wait, Weird. read the exact thing. I didn't find it. Oh, what's that quote you have there? This is something else. Oh, okay. You're just getting ahead of me. He texted a friend asking them to forgive what he was about to do. And posted on Twitter. That's pretty incriminating. And then three days later, after her death, he changes his Facebook pic to a quote that says, Dear Lord, forgive me for all of my sins I may commit today. Protect me from all the girls who don't deserve me and the ones who wish me dead. Uh, that's pretty on topic with a murder, right? I mean, like, but if you're going to murder someone, don't change your Facebook picture to something like that three days after when you're obviously the prime suspect because you've broken into the house and you've harassed and threatened to kill Faith before. Yeah, that seems really weird that he would do that. Eric's DNA didn't match anything in the room or in her. So, okay. But that doesn't mean he was the only one there. I still think he's a strong suspect. Yeah. Because it's almost the vibe I get from that message is like, hey guys, I just murdered someone and I kind of want you to know I did it, but because I don't want to just get no credit for this. That's kind of the the impression I get from that. No, I think probably there's some guilt. Really? I don't think so. I guess. Could be though. And then another suspect is Rosario, naturally. So she left the door unlocked. Was that intentional? I don't know. Could be an accident. She might have knew Eric was going to teach her. So another theory is that Eric and Rosario had met at that nightclub that night Mm -hmm. and they talked things over. Maybe they were fine. And like Eric convinced Rosario that like she needs to be taught a lesson. So she left the door unlocked, bounced, and maybe Eric. So like they were in on it together, essentially. Eric came back. Um, Rosario. What, What even could have happened? I could see. Is like Eric and Rosario are kind of getting back into into it. Yeah. And then uh, Faith steps in and tries like defending yeah. Rosario. And then Eric hates her for that. Takes it out on her later that night. Yeah. And also Rosario what? like wants to be with Eric more than she cares about her roommate. Um, Rosario doesn't go to any vigils or funeral, which... Some, it could be interpreted both ways. To me, that's weird. That's very weird. But to some people, it could be like, well, I understand she was very shook up. Like, I, maybe I wouldn't no. go to her vigils, but I'd at least go to the funeral. Yeah. And then she also left North Carolina back to Jersey to spend time with some family. But nothing, none of this was really exposed at the time or discussed or like publicized, so nothing was taken of that. Like they, they weren't like, why did she leave? You know, it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, I could see that just being a reaction to your friend dying too, but it's, yeah, I'm getting a suspicious vibe from Rosario. And then if Eric and Rosario were in on it together, there could have been a third, like I said, because the semen has to match someone, right? They can't match it with anyone? It could just be a random guy she had sex with that day though, or like the previous night. Maybe. But if, I don't know. I'm assuming she was sexually assaulted, given the circumstances in which she was found. That would make sense, yeah. I feel like... So then it's just like a random person? No. I I feel like... So a random act, but that doesn't match with the note, if that note was actually related to the case. Yeah, it could be just a random guy that did that too, but... And then someone that Faith rejected at the club, and he followed her home. No. Just... Yeah. So my thinking has to be, it's either Eric or Rosario. 99% chance, I would say. Yeah. It's not just going to be some random guy like checking doorknobs 
on apartments in a college campus. It could be that, but it's very rare. What do you guys got? What do you think on this one? It's definitely less likely. I like this rule. This is actually a good rule. I try not to eat things that I can't feed my dog. I like chocolate, but other than that, and coffee. Late to the party. What crime scene are we talking about? This is the murder of Faith Hedgepeth. Yeah. That's a hard last name to say. What do you think? Um, yeah, I would say it's... I don't know. If, if I'm putting any weight on the call, the butt dial, then I'm assuming... Eric and Rosario are in it together. That seems weird to me. Like a premeditated murder from them two? Not nope. premeditated. It no. might have not been intent to tended to be murder. Maybe Eric went too far. And what would their motive for murdering her be? Because like she drove a wedge between them. Protective order. She was probably like, hey, you're an abusive relationship. Like get rid of this guy. So he moves out. I don't know. I mean, jealous bitch. Like... Maybe Rosario was like, well, she's jealous that I have a boyfriend. She doesn't. I kind of... Yeah, at 19, like, females at 19, I feel like they overthink things. Like, they're like, my friends are jealous of me, which is, like, not ever really they true. Do. Yeah. $5 donation from Paramedic9310. Love you guys. You helped me stay on track. Thank you. I sort of like the idea that maybe she was murdered early on, earlier on in the night than we're thinking. Not, like, between 4 and 11 a.m. And then the texts were sent from Rosario using her phone. Well, they're left leaving the club. They're left seen leaving the club at two o six. Just the two of them. Yeah. And Eric may or may not have been at the club. We don't know. Right. No security footage or anything. No. So we don't know what Eric was really doing at all that night then. Mm -mm. Well, and nothing was nothing was released by the cops regarding that. So you know what kind of makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. is like a real psycho type scenario like that Lulu Lululemon murder I did mm -hmm. where the girl just like loses her mind. Uh, the Rosario, they get home from the club and there's just like some kind of dispute. She feels like the other girl or she's really jealous of the other girl, something like that, murders her, uses her phone, dead body sitting in the other room, uses her phone, texting Eric, you don't know how much Rosario needs you. Because that's like such a text that you would send about yourself to someone else, right? Like, you don't know how much I need you kind of a thing. Maybe. I don't think I would ever do that. I if wouldn't I either. Someone, I mean, I guess yeah, I would. we're normal people. But um, that seems like, that's my thought. That's my theory. Yeah, I mean, the best, the best thing in relation to that I can think is like, why would she need to leave the house at 425 a.m. other than like maybe an alibi? Yeah, that's what, exactly. And door unlocked? Yeah. And then the 911 call, a little bit suspect. And I like what Matthew Newbold says. I agree with this. Uh, they are not in it together. One of them would have rolled on the other already. I but, think so. But we don't know if, like, I don't even know if Rosario was heavily questioned. And if we're thinking Rosario did it, then are we just saying Eric's, like, Facebook profile and everything is random? Just random chance? Or, like, maybe even... Because he knows one of his acquaintances died, right? And then he's changing his... Facebook profile to that. Maybe it's just some kind of like weird But saying psycho like, forgive thing. me for what I'm about to do. Like, yeah. what was he thinking? I don't know. I we don't, don't know. know. Yeah. yeah. Um, she could have hired someone to kill her and then left the note when she got back. I think hiring kill, hitman and killers is like very... That doesn't happen in college, does it? No. No, no, I don't, I don't think it's like stuff. a high... high it uh, happens sometimes. It definitely happens. Like the only I've I've seen like when they get caught. Yeah, we should do one like that. That's funny. But yeah. Daddy, Daddy Warbucks, Warbucks again. Hey, pulling out the wallet. You both changed my life. Thanks you. Thank you. But that's awesome. I'm glad we can, you know, be of any help. Are you getting tax breaks on these donations, Daddy Warbucks? You probably are. Yeah. Right. Charity. Um, Sharon Nichols, thank you for the $10 donation. Just got your cookbook. I love it. Starting with keto on Monday. You both inspired me. That's exciting. That's so close. One thing I would suggest is like, and this is what I would have done and, you know, might still do, but I highly 
recommend against it is don't go ham on Sunday. Don't be like, this is my last day because tomorrow I'm kicking in the gear. Because I like that. Oh, she's about to start keto? On Monday. Yeah. So I'm like, don't like just go super hard and get like Domino's and Krispy Kreme. Like, yeah. just have a normal day because I think that would make it harder to start on Monday and stay motivated. Maybe you have like your favorite food that's high carb. Yeah, but like get pizza. Normal portion. But like, don't, you don't need to eat like an extra large pie unless that's what you normally do. Of course. Yeah. Just less extremes in everything, I think, yeah. is the way to go. Makes life a lot easier and making and then, choices. Then when you start on Monday, you're not going to feel so much pressure to be like right extremely on point, right? Yeah. All right. Should I jump in? Yeah. You guys seen any good movies lately? We haven't gone to one in like three or four weeks probably. Uh, yeah, I went to one. Nope, I didn't go one when I was home. Hitmen don't mutilate, they just get the job done. That's true, it's like two in the back of the head, right? But I, I'm sure you can hire a hitman to, to stage a crime scene, too. To pull under... Uh, yeah. I don't know. Oh, the no-bake cheesecakes? Yeah, we haven't made those in a long time. Those are really good. Yeah, hi, buddy. Did you ever say what your final theory was? I think they both were in on it. You're funny. It's real. All right, here we go. My story today is Asha Degree, and this is a pretty famous case. I don't know if it's Aisha or Asha. I'm just gonna go with Asha. Asha Degree, she's nine years old, and this case takes place in the year 2000. And we are in Shelby, which is a town on the outskirts of Charlotte, relatively rural area. Asha lives at home with her 10-year-old brother, her mom, and dad. How old is she? She's nine. Okay. So they were not practicing proper child spacing. That's what happens. Sunday, February 13th, 2000. They went to church. They ate lunch at their aunt's house, and they seemed to have a, a good family in the area. Went home. The, the two kids went home with mom. Dad had two jobs, so he had to go into work right after that whole... The, the lunch. Aikila, I I don't know how to pronounce her name. Aikila, the mom. She had a routine. She would bathe the kids before bed. But on this night in particular, seems like a totally unrelated event. A car crashed into a power line and the power in her house was out. So they couldn't do a bath. They couldn't heat the water, I guess. So the kids went to bed early and they were planning on doing baths in the morning. Do you use hot water when you electricity out? If you have an electric water heater, I think so. I, yeah, I don't know. Is that how it works, guys? And then there's a somewhat debated timeline on what happens with the father. So he returns home around 12.30 a.m., a little after midnight. Power's on when he gets home. Power's back on. Now, he either... <laughs> the mom is named Akila. Okay, she did. <laughs> um, so he watches TV and then goes to bed around 2.30 a.m. That's one timeline. So two hours of TV, then bed. Another timeline is he comes home. Maybe he went back out to like the corner store to buy candy because the next day or like two, in two days, it was going to be Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. He wanted to have candy for the kids. But no matter what, it's pretty agreed upon. Went to bed at 2.30 a.m. How is that agreed upon? Just, that's the established timeline. Okay. I mean, it's, it's his testimony, Account. basically. Okay. Yeah, that's the only real way to verify it. Dad, now we're back to like the agreed upon timeline. Dad checks on both kids at around 2.30 a.m. They, they sleep in the same room. He opens the door, they're both there. Okay. The dad wakes up in the middle of the night, this is a bit shaky. And he says he sees Asha standing in their room. Or maybe like in the doorway, like kind of in the hallway. That's more of the way I interpreted it. Do we it. know what time? No. Okay. Middle of the night. She may, the theory is that she was using the restroom before going back to bed. That's what he's thinking. He's like, oh, she's up, go to the bathroom, back to bed. He then hears movement in the room and believes Asha is moving in the room moving around in her bed. It's just like the bed creaking noises. Okay. And when you live in a house for long enough with people, can't you just like pick up on all the sounds? You're like, oh, that's mom. She's, she just, you know, yeah. got out of the shower. Like Miley and Julius, yeah. Yeah. 
So I take his testimony to be pretty credible if he heard a creaking bed. At 5.45 a.m., the mom wakes up, and typically she wakes up a little bit before the kids, gets the bath ready, and then wakes them up. So she turns on the bath water, she goes into the kids' room, she peeks in, she calls out, her son immediately gets up. The electricity's already back? Yeah, it was back when the father got home. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, she calls for Asha, and there's no one in bed, no response, nothing's going on. So she's a little concerned. She starts searching around the house. Doesn't find her. She wakes up the husband. They both check all around the house one last time. Like, I think that's what you would normally do, right? You just check everywhere. Where is this kid? They go, they check their cars. I don't know why they would do that, but they check their cars. And then they eventually check at nearby families, like their grandmother, their aunt. I think they even had one relative across the street. So they check all those. And when they check those and they realize she's nowhere, that's when they're like, whoa, okay, something's seriously wrong. And then the father calls 911. It's pretty quickly after they discover the kid's missing, maybe like 45 minutes or so. They do all the checking and then they call. And uh, so there is a 911 call. There's a transcript you can see online, but I just picked out the, the key points. You couldn't, there's no uh, voicemail or anything. It's just a written transcript. So you can't get a feel for like how, how the dad is, is reacting. But the next door neighbor said that they saw a kid on the road last night, just walking on the road, like down the neighborhood road. Her bag was missing and her pocketbook from her room, like her school book bag. Hmm. Oh, and maybe she was in their room to like just look at them one last time before she left. I would do that. You would? Yeah. Because like if you really love them, but you feel like you have to leave, don't you want to She's only one? nine, remember? Yeah. Is she like an inner city kid though? Like... It's different when you live in like a... She's not in an inner city kid at all. She's like rural. Hmm. But like that would add up kind of. Yeah. But so I guess I don't fully know what nine-year-old children are like. Are you still giving your kids a bath at age nine and ten? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so either, but I, I maybe you do. Um, and her brother did not hear her get up. These are all points from the 911 call that we learned. So police were on the scene at 6.40 a.m. and they immediately began searching nearby areas and search dogs were used. So that, as far as responses go, to me, A+, plus, right? Six, she's discovered missing at like a little after 5.45, 6.40, police are searching. Yeah, that's great. A lot of people saying no to the bath thing, right? Yeah, not Not at giving all. bath to the age nine. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, families are different. Uh, when the neighborhood starts waking up around like 7-ish, they all are like, whoa, what's going on? There's all these cop cars. They start helping search. And police immediately, as you should do, they start treating the house as a crime scene. So they're like caution taping off the house. They start searching through it. And they do not find any indication of a crime being committed. What they do find is indication that she left on her own. That's what they seem to, their initial based theory is. Based on what's is. missing and like the neighbor saying something? Yeah, based on the sighting of her leaving, the backpack, the backpack missing is the big thing. Yeah. Because if someone took her, why would they take her backpack? Yeah. At nine, though, you still have to get after them to get in the bath. Do they do showers at nine years old? Like, what age do you start taking showers? Someone said their six-year-old takes a shower on their own. Six seems young. I do remember the first time I took a shower. It was, like, I was scared. Were you? Did you take a shower? I don't remember. I don't have a lot of memory of that kind of stuff. I remember washing my hair backwards because I was so scared of just, like, putting my head in, in oh. water. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, so police start to wonder if this is something she'd been planning for a while. So their initial take on the crime scene is like, she was fake sleeping in bed. Mm -hmm. After the dad checked on her, this was all premeditated planned. Bag was already packed, grabbed it and gone. Hmm. In questioning the mom, we learned some things. We learned that Asha was deathly afraid of the dark 
dogs and storms. And two of those three things were at play that night. It was a winter storm and it was dark, oh, obviously. So it wasn't like dogs running rampant? No. Uh, it was actually though, if you've ever been driving on a rural road at like 2 a.m., that's what she was basically walking on. It's the dar as dark as it gets. Yeah. And she was extremely shy and timid and like overly sheltered is the impression you get from the mom. So someone said, was there a chance of abuse? I don't know. Like if she was being abused. There's would, a chance of anything, right? I would imagine her brother was and she would like want to take her brother with her. I feel like that's how it usually is in like movies or like yeah. I'd imagine. Um, so the, the uh, bath at age nine that and even the, the brother is age 10. That goes in accordance with being really sheltered, I would say, right? Yeah. But if it's also like a rural area. They just do that. But they do more baths out well, there. Well, like how out there are we thinking? Like, are they not like, that out are there. Are they like homeschooled? Like, no, no. It's not like the super crazy countryside. What year was this? 2000. They're, they're in driving distance of Charlotte, North Carolina. Not yeah, that far. Know. Yeah, I'm so, picturing like 1930s. No. <laughs> All doors were locked in the home when the parents woke up. And Asha had a house key. So if she left, she must have then turned around and locked the door. Okay. Which at age nine, I don't know if I would do that. Maybe you would. Who knows? I also find it weird if she's really sheltered to have a house key. Why? I would never have a house key. I would say I was relatively sheltered. Well, if they get home earlier than the parents from school. Yeah, but see, that doesn't go in line with being sheltered if you're actually, like, getting home and you have the house to yourself. Yeah, I don't know. FBI says it appears her bag had been packed well in advance of that night, which I don't know how you really can determine that. Yeah, I feel like, like, I feel like what we've been seeing, like, TV-wise as well as, like, reading case-wise it's like the FBI just want someone to blame. They want a reason for it to just be like, all right, we got it, we're done. Sometimes. Like rushing it. And one thing I'm always thinking when I hear stuff like this, it's like the parents. What's going on with the parents? Is there any way this could just be a parent cover-up type of thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like was she dead before? Like was, did she die at like 8 p.m. the previous the kids, day? The girl walking down the street or some ch person. Yeah. So that's the thing. There is actually a lot of sightings of her. Which hmm. I don't think it is the parents, but I'm always suspicious of the parents. Um, so the first night of her missing, we get a lot of sightings. And this is she went missing that night. So the next evening, like they're searching for her all day that evening, a lot of sighting calls come in. What's a latchkey kids? Latchkey kids have keys and come home alone at nine with their key. Yeah, but would you call latchkey kids sheltered? What's generally? latchkey kids? Someone who just has a key and they, like their parents are working, they come home, they open the door. Oh, I didn't know there was a name. Yeah. Okay, I guess they could be both. 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 Uh, the, the first night of her missing, there's a lot of sightings. So two people saw her walking down a two-lane highway, like the big highway in the area, between 3.30 and 4 a.m., and to me, that's going to be pretty an accurate sighting because you don't really see nine-year-old girls walking on the highway by themselves much, right? Yeah. At 3.30 a.m. Yeah. Wait, who? And two people saw her? Two like people driving, saw her. Driving? Yeah. Like, okay. And then she was described perfectly by the witnesses exactly what the police believe she was wearing. The sighting was one mile from her home and she was walking towards town. And she was familiar with that road because that's the route her school bus took to school. Hmm. Two full outfits were found to be missing from the house and the sighting matches one of them. Would you stop if you saw a kid like that? I don't know. I think you should. I would probably be like, that's a ghost. Keep driving. I would yeah. be like kind of creeped out. No, I think I would. I don't know. I don't know. I can't, honestly, I can't... Like, people are stopped on the side of the highway all the time, and I don't stop for them. I think in an well, ideal like a world, child you would, at 3.30 a.m. Yeah, you should stop. Or, like, wouldn't you call the cops right away and be like, I just saw a child walking down this highway. Like, at least inform someone. Yeah. Another man who saw her, he did stop. He did a U-turn, and as he, like, approached her, she ran into the tree line, like, to hide. Hmm. And he didn't run after her? No. 
Well, you called that in, right? He didn't. He called it in the next day. Why didn't you call it in right away? I don't know. And that's everything from the day of the disappearance. Then four days later, police question a lady who owns a property off of the highway Asha was last seen at, and she says she found something on her property. She found a Mickey Mouse hair bow, a green marker, and a pencil in her woodshed. And she gives permission to search the shed. They find candy wrappers, and they say these are the exact candy wrappers from like her Valentine's Day bag that she got the other day. So it seems like Asha was for sure in this doing? woodshed. I'm yeah. so confused. She's nine. Like, what's going on in her brain? Jeez, poor thing. Yeah, you have to wonder, right? Yeah, like, what is... Yeah, something's up. So it's like, I'm thinking, do the... Is there something going on that the parents aren't really telling Sharing? everyone? Yeah. I feel like that's probably the, the most likely of the case. It seems like it could be. Then 18 months later, a contractor is clearing land off of the high, off that same highway, but it's 26 miles in the opposite direction. And he finds a buried black trash bag, double bagged, buried under the ground, but like a little bit of it he could see. So he pulled it out, opens it, and it's her backpack. Okay, so that leads me to believe someone has her. Fall play at that point, right? Yeah, and it's been 18 months and she's... Yeah. And police get the get permission to search the land. They don't really find anything. They found animal <laughs> bones and men's khakis. And testing has been done on these items, but it was never released to the public, which leads some people to think the cops found something. But they're not releasing it. But who knows? Like Faith's story. Yeah. And then... Years later, 2014, Donald Ferguson is arrested and he begins to get linked to this case because he was convicted of a similar seven-year-old like, uh, like kidnap, murder, and he was in the area where Asha lived at the time, mm -hmm. but nothing conclusive has been drawn from that. And then in 2016, there's another new tip. The night Asha went missing, she was seen getting into a car. And this was an FBI release, so they seemed to believe it. A dark green 1975 Ford Thunderbird, which is a pretty distinct car. Why would she get into that car? Near the point of her last sighting. And that's all there is on the case. And I have some notes. She was reading a book about a runaway at the time, which I don't... Who knows? Who knows? Maybe that could influence you, though. Well, yeah. I mean, if, was the runaway book, like, a positive one? Like, the person ended up getting to, like, the big city and, like, living her dream out? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, she either played... Yeah, she, she was on a new basketball team, and apparently basketball was her favorite thing. And in her first game, they lost. So one thing I think could be happening is... Her dad was like maybe a very strict basketball parent or mom, and she played bad, and they were like very mad about it. Abusive, mad, or just angry? Like maybe just like emotionally abusive. Okay. And then, so since she was walking on that road that her bus takes to school, one theory that someone posted on Reddit that I was like that could make a little bit of sense was she was going just at like midnight to go shoot around at the gym to prove how much to her dad that she, you know, she was really trying hard. What, what, um, what Not were that the she... clothes missing? Was anything basketball related or gym related? I don't know. Oh. And she didn't have a basketball either. So that, I guess, doesn't make that much sense. Nine years old is extremely young for a child to run away. Too young, I was It's thinking. a little too young. Nine is rare that children run away. It's usually like 14. Like, I think the, the highest age bracket is like 13, 14, 11, and 12 sometimes. But like 9 and 10 is very rare. Hmm. And my thinking with all of that, since it is so young, is was she coerced into leaving? By whom? Just like over time, someone, I don't know, like. Who? I don't know who, but it would just be someone. It'd have to be someone in real life, maybe a family member. That's the only person that would make sense. She didn't really have internet access at the time, so. Yeah, she's not like running into a lot of older people. 
Did she enter the woodshed by herself or was she taken and then there? My thinking is she entered the woodshed by herself. She was taken later on that night. Yeah, I would think so as well. Um, maybe she was like planning to meet up with a friend. Like they wanted to run away together. Not like a boy, but like, you know, just like two friends who are like tired of basketball. I don't know, like yeah. tired of just... But do you get tired of things at age nine? Like, I don't remember being nine. I don't know what that's like. Maybe, but... But that's fourth grade? Third grade? Yeah, yeah. So fourth grade, I mean, she's super little. Yeah, oh, so tiny. That's yeah. sad. It's hard for me to imagine she had this plan of running away. Especially if you're scared of the dark. Because when you're in fourth grade and you're scared of the dark, you're actually... Scared, of the scared to where you can't even really like go out in it, right? Yeah, you can't even like walk around the house. Like I couldn't walk around. The, I still can't even walk around the house sometimes. It's so dark. I have to run and hit a light switch. So here's the theories. The FBI theory is she left home on her own and was met with foul play. That seems to be the strongest theory. We just don't know why she would leave. Yeah. It wouldn't make sense. To, for her to live, leave on her own, like, conviction. The only two reasons she would leave, I think, is something the parents aren't telling us, some kind of fight, something like yeah. that, maybe even abuse, or she was groomed by someone to leave. Parents were abusing her, she ran away. That's my initial thought, always. Just, like, some form of abuse. But, like, I would imagine if her brother was being, maybe she was the only one being abused. It seems like the parents were actually kind of good people, though, from what I've read. Like, dad's working two jobs, going out late at night to buy Valentine's Day candy for his kids. Yeah. Uh, theory two is the parents did it or they know more than they are saying. I don't think they did it because it does seem like she left. She left with the sightings? Yeah, and because there's a lot of sightings. But it might be something like that was going on in the house. Maybe the parents were fighting and she was like tired of them fight, like fighting and she wanted to leave. Cause like, I feel like divorce really affects kids at a young age. Like I can remember my parents fighting more than I can remember like, I don't know, showering at nine. Yeah. Cause you remember Cause the traumatic things yeah. usually. Sleepwalking? No. She I don't think you grab your backpack. You wouldn't Maybe pack, not. yeah. Um, number three, theory would be groomed into a meetup, possibly by a family member. Yeah, maybe a family member was abusing her. And then the fourth one, a little bit off the wall, is a hit and run. I don't know though, like, if you hit someone at 4 a.m., a little girl, don't you tell the cops? Or, I don't know. I, I would imagine you tell the cops. What are the... You immediately drive the child to the hospital, right? Yeah. What are the repercussions for a hit and run at 4 a.m. where you're like, vision is impaired? Do you think you still go to jail for that? Manslaughter, yeah. But, I mean, that wouldn't be my first thought. Mine would, would be, be like, be she's definitely... The child. Maybe she's not dead. But you also don't want to move the child because you've hit it. You'd call yeah. us nine. I don't know. But there's a lot of people out there. Like, recently, my friend, when we were visiting at home, Kathleen, her... The neighbor had a friend over and they were drinking and then like the drunken friend was driving home and she hit Kathleen's mom's car and totaled it. What? And she like hit it so hard it moved and she just drove off and they didn't know who it was until like they got the kid to confess. Wait, what happened at the end? The kid, the neighbor confessed. Oh. After denying it and like okay. he, he felt bad. But like, what I'm saying is like, I mean, if, if someone hit her, it could have been also like a younger person who's scared and not like an older gentleman or older woman. Yeah. I guess that's another thing. Like the person could be drunk. It's three or four a.m. Yeah. I mean, yeah. People freak out sometimes, even if they're not drunk. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Drunk drivers leave the scene, but they don't bury backpacks. I don't. Maybe she buried her backpack. It's not like that far-fetched to imagine someone... Yeah, yeah, the, you're right. They don't take the backpack and bury it. They would never do that. They just leave the backpack. Yeah, why was her backpack buried? I guess that's the weirdest thing, which leads me to believe she was taken. Yeah, the backpack being buried means like a, a legit child predator type guy, right? To me. Yeah. 
But it's like such a weird happenstance to be driving on the road at 4 a.m. Just like the opportunity. There's a nine-year-old girl walking there. It's, a, it's the perfect opportunity. Especially it's kind of hard for me to believe there wasn't some contact before... Before, like, just chance driving by her that night. Is that what you're imagining? Guy's just driving, he's like, oh, there's a nine-year-old girl. Well, yeah, and then he turns around, and he's like, hey, how's it going? Like, do you need help? And maybe at that point, she is actually scared. She wants to go home. And she's like, yeah, I'm scared. I want to go home. So he's like, hop in. I'll give you a ride home. And, like, that's it. Because it's easy to coerce nine-year-olds. It's easy. They're so vulnerable. Yeah. In my opinion. Um, someone hit her on the road and they got scared and hit everything. I think the chances of them hiding everything is less likely. The real mystery is why did she leave in the first place? Yeah. The one thing that really ties everything together is she's coerced into leaving by some kind of child predator. That maybe, I don't know where she would have met them, but like, I'm sure she goes to, I don't know, Sunday school. She goes to like, you know, basketball. She has a lot of stuff she does probably. Yeah. But if she was so sheltered, I'm sure she didn't have like a lot of alone time. She, like, her mom was always waiting. She'd get in the car. I don't know. This is a real mystery, but there is some hope that this one will be solved by uh, DNA at some point. It's funny how like, you, can you imagine in like a hundred years, all the cases we're going to be able to solve with like super advanced DNA? Because DNA just keeps getting better and better and we end up solving old cases. Yeah. Maybe we'll have the answer to some of these we've discussed already. That's it. That's the two cases, guys. Yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't been wearing my ring. I just haven't charged it. I need to. Yeah, but takes candy to eat in a shed? Yeah, that is really weird. If That's... she's being coerced to leave? Yeah, I guess if you're coerced to leave, what does that look like? Wouldn't, would there be a meeting point or... I, I would don't imagine know. before she got to the shed and sat down to eat her candy and like color with her green marker. I don't think she was coloring. Why'd she? I think she was just. Him? I don't know. She just dropped. Maybe, I think she went in the shed to get out of the rain because it was raining. Yeah, that's sad. She's so young, so tiny. They're both sad. Even Faith was really young. 19 is super young. Someone said the nine-year-old could leave hoping for an adventure. She's a sheltered nine-year-old girl and all of a sudden she's running away at midnight. I think family did it and sightings are flukes. Huh. Yeah, Honestly, the sightings could be flukes. I would discount sightings, but I think it's harder for the sightings to be flukes when it's a nine-year-old girl on the side of a highway. I think that's pretty... Close to the area and the candy. And the timing of it. And her and backpack being buried. Yeah. She definitely left for some reason. Yeah. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> Michael Feller, yeah. thank you for the donation. Great job. Thank you. All right. Anything keto related, I guess, we could answer? We've been watching Married at First Sight season... What season five? Five, yeah. Yep. They, they do a pretty decent job matching these people, because like maybe they're not physically attracted, but like I think, in other ways, they're very um, on par, paper wise, obviously. At least they want to make a good run at it. They're yeah. both committed. They're in a position where they they just want the marriage part. It is interesting that the power was out, but I do think that might just be coincidence. Yeah. Was the body found? No. Body has never been found. Hi, buddy. How's the baby? Baby's good. Happy and healthy. That shows my guilty pleasure. I don't tell people I'm watching it, but I love it. <laughs> we share. Because there's definitely a lot of people out there who enjoy it. My I can imagine. Couples, especially. This is my favorite Zevia flavor, black cherry. <laughs> Mine's probably cola or ginger ale. Oh, Matthew, your daughter's 10. Do you do baths with your children at that age? I'm sure he doesn't. 
Are you bathing your daughter though? Like you wouldn't bathe it, our daughter at 10. You start feeling weird about it at around like age. I mean like I'd probably bathe our son, but would you bathe our daughter? I think it's less weird for the mom. The mother, yeah. I but at know. age 10, no. I don't know. 10, I don't know. I don't know what a 10 year old is like. Yeah. Sally Darling, thank you for the $5. Love you, Matt and Mega. Congrats on the Bambino. Question, is the whoosh effect real? We haven't heard about that in a while. I remember when that was like the only question people were asking. The whoosh effect. Where is that? I think it is real, but it's not, there's no as real. As simplified as like, your fat cells get replaced with water. And Maybe it is though. I've never looked into it. I, so like I've seen like, like images or like, you know, little like uh, videos where they show what's happening to the cell. So it's like a fat cell this big. And then somehow like as the fat's going down, it's still, it's getting filled with water. And then one day all the water whooshes out of the fat cell. I don't know. I'm not like a doctor and nutritionist, but I would imagine it's like, you know, your body, you lose, considerable weight then you have a plateau mm -hmm. then you lose just a considerable more amount of weight that's kind of how it works and the general trajectory will be downwards but it's not like a linear downward progression there's going to be points of plateau that's my interpretation yeah so it, like but. so like i had a plateau for a while when i was doing the cut a cut and it was like five six weeks and then one day i was two pounds lighter so I don't know if that would be like the whoosh effect. I don't know the science behind that, but there's definitely, yeah, some, what Matt said was kind of on, on target. Okay, it seems to be consensus that you do not bathe a 10 year old, but actually, so maybe she could have just been turning the bath on and off for them, like you guys are saying. And yeah, like, she's not like scrubbing them. Okay, and like, that was, for some reason I thought that's what was going on, but maybe, yeah, she just turned the bath on Well, when off. you say she's giving them a bath, that's what it sounds like. Yeah. All right, guys, is that it? We got a recipe coming tomorrow. I don't know which one it is yet, though. We still got to decide. Maybe oh, yeah. a dessert one, if we have one. I think we have one. Yeah, you should have edited it, but we have two edited already. We can ask them and they can choose right now. What are they? Um, it's the chicken biryani, which is really good. And then what's the other one? It's Isn't not there the... a dessert or no? No. I can't remember. Cinnamon rolls, someone said. Oh, I wish. We still have to perfect the cinnamon roll. Pre-workouts pre like C4 doesn't have sugar, but is it keto friendly? Um, it's not really the best for keto. It doesn't have sugar, but it has a lot of maltodextrin and with Things like supplements, they don't actually have to give you like the nutrition, right? So let me look up the C4 ingredients here real quick. My five-year-old bathed himself. That seems so young, but that's so cute. Five years old, oh my gosh, how cute. Actually, the ingredients for, so there is no filler used here. What's the caffeine amount? I feel like we've looked at it and it's super high. Explosive energy blend, 425 milligrams. It's 150 milligrams of caffeine and then a few other stimulant type things. But it does have like the red 40 in it and stuff. It's not the best, but if you like it, I would say it's not a big deal. Sarah Soto, thank you for the donation. Love watching you guys. Thank you. We really appreciate you being here. We know it's not like a keto dedicated night, but you guys enjoying this and throwing out your theories. We love, we love, love, love. Um, my son, son refused to get naked in front of me at seven. Oh my God. I would be like, get naked. Would you? You don't have a choice. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what I'd be like. It's going to be so weird to have full control over another child. I'm hoping the power doesn't go to my head. I feel like it does sometimes for people, right? For parents. Yeah. That's why we have very strict parents. Yeah. Like your parents for sure. My dad's it's gonna be interesting. Um, you should do a spatchcock chicken tutorial. That's actually a really good idea. Can you do a gender reveal? I think we should find out. Wait, are we? When are we finding out? Friday. Friday. But we already kind of know. I think. It was but like a guess by a technician, because they can like kind of tell based on like the how your how the frame or like the bone structure of the baby's laid. But um, how should we do a gender reveal? 
Yeah, you guys got ideas? Yeah, like a simple idea, obviously. We could just do it on Murder, She Ate one week. Next week? Yeah. So, yeah, you'll just wait? Yeah, we could do gender reveal. Okay. And then talk murders. We should do, like, baby murders for that. <laughs> I'm kidding. Jesus. But maybe, maybe we should. He always talks about murdered babies and killed babies, and it really, I don't like it. He loves it, though. I always do that, and you're always, like, I you do your so thing mad. where you're, like... Yeah, because like that's not cool to talk about. It's sad. Um, Mega, you should try The Sims 4. It's more playable than Sims 3. Matt told me when he downloaded it for me that Sims 3 was the highest I, I didn't think go. she was going to look into it. Well, people have just been telling me left and right Sims 4. It's because Sims 4 isn't available on Steam. Oh. But I can get it for you. It's on like the EA Game Launcher or something. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, you could do Baby Lisa. The case. You you would do that. You've done okay. it before. I could do it. It's like your, your favorite case. I love saying Baby Lisa, too. Make a keto cake inside pink or blue. Yeah. I feel like I'd want someone else to make it for me, though. So then I can just eat it instead of make it. Oh, you should just do the gender reveal with flavor. And then I have to try tasting what gender it is. How would we do that? Like, one can be... Blueberry essential oil. Yeah, and one can be like a different rose essential. Yeah. Um, I've lost forty pounds so far on keto. I started late January. I love your channel and your advice. Congratulations, that's amazing. Isn't Julia's looking like a a nice young man these days? Someone said, "Don't gender reveal." Okay. Um. Uh, yeah, after, if Sambo Wango does custom cakes, I feel like it's just very last minute, right? Yeah. To, like call them Thursday and have them do it for Friday. You call them today. Oh, Wednesday. Do you ever cover Jean Bonnet? No, but we should soon. Have you guys been watching the Adnan documentary on HBO? It's horrendous. And there's also a Madeline McCann documentary on Netflix. That's one of my, I think, the most interesting That cases. was actually really good. It was, it was yeah. a little lully, like little lulls, but it was good overall. Hi, buddy. All right. I guess that's it. We'll see you next week. Time to wind down for the night. Bye. Have a beautiful Wednesday and weekend weekend. Joyce is going to get a haircut this week. If you guys want to comment uh, cases you want us to do in the future, or if anyone wants to comment video ideas, like informational videos you want us to try doing, yes, we can do those. We're going to film some of those tomorrow. All right. See ya.